So pre-workout ritual, new wee tub of creatine here as well. I always have it with my pre-workout, otherwise I forget to take it. I'm trying to get the scooper out anyway, but we're having a nightmare with that. But regardless, creatine, take a bit of pre-workout, see how things go. We're taking non-stim because I just had the caffeine. This stuff is thick. Now, we're bringing out our own subs in April. We're not starting with a non-stim because, fuck, this stuff is... See, whenever it's, it's like glycer size, it's like, a, it's like a pump enhancer. It's always thick as fuck. Look how thick that is, Paul. Look. Ugh. I always use non-stim because I find that the, the pump's better. So it's one of them things where it's just a really good shout. And then I always take a wee bit of creatine. And if I can't fucking think, I've done this that long, I'll just eyeball her. Unless I see the scoop. Fuck me in here, took half the tub. I'll just take half the tub today. So as much creatine as I can get in me. As I've done other pre-workouts that I normally do, which sounds very fucking weird, is I usually listen to a certain type of music whenever I'm driving to the gym. Usually, I didn't let, put Paul through it there because we are coming back from Lurgan, but usually I listen to something like Ludovoco or... Bocelli, yes I know. I do that in my dips as well whenever I go to the water. I don't know, something about it just gets me psyched. And I always, I was talking to my mindset coach called Gar, and he was saying always do the same things whenever you work out or whenever you need to get yourself zoned in. So I always listen to like slow music. I don't know, it's something about them two people that just like fucking flick a switch on me. And I always have the same pre-workout. I always have like non-stim, I have a cup of coffee. And then the only last thing I do is I always put chewing gum in once I'm done with pre-workout. I know that sounds odd, but it like, Flex the switch in my head. Oh, oh, oh. All right, I'll check out what the session is anyway before I go any further. I stopped using a logbook a while back and now I just use it my phone. Uh, and then what I always do when I start a session is I always use this app, if you ever see it, it's called Opal. And I always just, as soon as my session starts, as soon as I come in here, I always hit start block. And then it means if I want to click on Instagram, I'm blocked, so that's me zoned in now. So I find it easy to use my phone because it's always on me. I used to spill fucking water on my logbook like a moron or forget a pen. And so I just log on my phone a lot of the time and it's an absolute beauty then. My best good. Jam on in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Couple of warm up sets. Nice and light, just getting a wee bit of blood in the muscles. Pull there. So we're gonna start off with an overhand pull down, working sort of mid back carries, even though it's like normally like a lap pull down. Lat pull downs don't really work the lats that well. So we're focusing on working mid back to start because this is really the only movement for it I do during the week. And what you'll notice is, see with this machine, it's got a cam. So a lot of machines will never let you adjust the cam. This one does. So what you'll notice is, whenever I pull this, the further away this is, see the, the more round that gets, like look how heavy that is at that position. And when you think about it, whenever it's heaviest here, here, and that's the heaviest it is throughout the range, you don't want it heaviest there because it's so fucking tough. So this cam, it should be for me, position like this. So as you'll see, whenever I pull down now, it's tough here, which is where you're like in a lengthened position. But as you pull down where you get weaker, it gives you a hand. So do you know why the hardest part of a pull down is the very bottom? This is now the lightest in that machine. Whereas whenever you think about it, where do you feel in the lap pull down? Is it ever the first third or half of the rep? It's not, it's always getting the bar from here to your chest. So it's almost like hard, 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 hard. And then it, all of a sudden, see from here, it gets easier for that last wee inch. So toughest, tough, tough, easy, easier, easiest. Now don't get me wrong, still tough, but it almost gives you that little bit of a hand when you need it. And it just, it makes the movement feel more complete. So I definitely think that's like probably one of the best pieces of kit that you get in here. So we'll kick in here, three sets, eight to 12, really, really simple. Pretty much going as close to failure as we can. And that's all there is to it. That's the tune, that's the tune. Oh. Oh. oh, left my soul, that's it. Whenever you're thinking of growing your back fully, you don't need a whole lot of movements. If you want your lats to grow, think lengthen and shorten so a one-arm dumbbell row, machine row, and a neutral grip pull down, massively all you need. Massively all you need. And for like the likes of your traps, mid-back, an overhand row, and overhand pull down. Now, yes, you can say it's your rear delts on your back and all these other things, and pull downs. But realistically, if you do them four movements, an overhand pull down, neutral grip pull down, neutral grip row, overhand row, you're gonna do the majority of work that your back needs. That's it, so don't miss any of them, and I guarantee you'll grow faster. Oh, oh fuck. 
It's one of the things I think to get in the mindset for each set, you really have to think about it. You can't just walk in. I think you need to think about it with intent. Whereas if you're just ticking the box, and moving through each movement, versus I usually have to think of something quite negative to fuel me for a set, which can sound a wee bit counterproductive for a lot of people, but it almost, anything that's going off or frustrating me, I just bring it here, use it in the sets, and then see by the end of the session, all my aggression, frustration's gone. I feel better mentally, and my sets have always went really, really well, so I've used it productively. So it's something to really think of how to get rid of that frustration, and it'll help you grow as well. We're gonna move into a neutral grip row. Now, the reason I'm using this neutral grip row in particular is because it's got chest support and it's got a trailing arm, which practically means you can maneuver it. It's not stuck in position. So I can play around with it how I feel it. So you'll so start high and row low. So it just suits better. Any machine usually with a trailing arm is gonna usually be superior. And the fact you're more stable in this with chest support, whereas with a dumbbell row, yes, you can maneuver it freely, but you're not as stable. You have to take into turn how much you're gonna rotate, how stable you are with actually pulling the weight. So this just eliminates that and it's actually a smarter move if you want to gain muscle quicker before everybody freaks out and says, stop overcomplicating row and I'm not. I'm just saying, if you have the machine, fucking use it. I'm going to do this single arm as well. I find that with single arm, I can just lean to the side a little bit more and it always gives me a better contraction. Oh, that's fucking heavy. Easy. Like. Looking back on that, I should have tucked the negative on the last rep. Ha. Ah. But, live and learn. That is just a mental game. It's all ever it is. If you think it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be tough. If you think it's just normal life, it is. It's just like people go on with socializing with this and that. You can still socialize sober. You can still socialize and diet. You can fit your calories in with a bit of drink. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of the things you have to balance for yourself. It's all mindset. Don't look at it like negative. If you do, it's a mess. I was listening to a podcast earlier, like, he goes, Mo, Mo Gadat. And he was saying, Joe, for every one negative thought you have, you need nine positive so that you don't fall into a negative mindset and your brain's full of like neuroplasticity. So, how you hardwire it, if you constantly think negative, you're going to start going on like that even when you don't mean to. You'll complain. We all know these people who go out for a meal. Doesn't matter what it is, they'll find something to complain about. First, if you're always looking for the good things in it, you hardwire your brain to always look for the positives. And that's something you need to actually drill into. It's not how you were born. It's the habits and the routines and the thought process and the neuroplasticity you've let fucking fest in there, whether it's for the benefit or the negative. But a lot of us aren't conscious about that. It's something I've really been working on. I guarantee that will fucking change your life if you focus on it. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, like hump the bar at the end there. Fuck. Right, so we're on the hammer curls, right? And see one common thing that you see wrong all the time is people pick it up and they take this big stance back and then they've got very little tension and the movement's slightly off. So the best thing you can do is stand directly over it and see the line of the cable from here compared to here. And when you curl up, it's just a straight line. It feels so much better. You get tension throughout the movement. the one that counts. That's it. Just three sets of every movement of the eight to 12, apart from the pull downs and the Y raises at the end, they're about 12 to 15, just getting a wee bit more volume in them. I just find with like, the likes of Delt specifically, 10 to 15 is always what I hit it with. I find that the lower rep ranges just don't feel as good. I don't grow as quick off it. I find they respond better to volume like calves. Ooh. <clears throat> Uh. 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 Oh, fuck. 
All right, all right, all right. Uh, we're going to do a cable Y raise. So in setting it up, I just go a bit below shoulder, maybe probably in line, just above, above the elbow. And this works the full delt, really good for the medial delt if you get it right. It can be tricky, so I use cuffs, handles can be a bit tough. And practically what you're going to want to do is handles here and finishing a Y. Now you don't want to lean back too much. And you'll know if you're doing it right because you'll feel it in your delt straight away. Pause at the top, squeeze, don't lean back. And always think hands wide, Ooh, not just back. So you want your arms pretty straight. Ooh. Uh, uh. Uh. Oh. All right, that session drop. Five exercises, three sets, not that much volume. The next session, I don't know what we'll do, but the split currently is upper, lower, day off. Push, pull, day off, upper. So it runs over eight days rather than anything else, because after the last upper day, there's never rest. So the sessions will rotate. We're gonna go through them all. And I think we'll do maybe what's in my gym bag, because if Paul shows you that, there is so much fucking shit in it. So you'll get a good laugh anyway. I don't know what the fuck's in there. So we'll do that and we'll do another session next. And thank you very much. As always, like, share on your story if you can, and make sure to subscribe. Thank you. Woo.